Close to Christmas, I thought I'd pop up here to Aviation Retail Direct, a good friend of ours. Uh, as you know, we've been here a couple of times before. He's got two stores open now. Uh, we're going to go in there and uh, meet up with Paul. I just need two seconds to put my mask on, so give me two. Okay. Okay, so we've got the uh, new store that's uh, next door. He's still yet to punch a hole through the, uh, through the wall. We'll talk about that in a bit. And of course, this is the store that we're all familiar with. Um, Aviation Retail Direct uh, com, is it, Jilly? I can't remember. Anyway, let's go in and meet Paul and the crew. Hey, up. Oh, I'm all right, mate. <laughs> Just like last time. Uh, didn't even know we were coming, did you? Okay, let's uh, let's get that mic on you, fella. Okay. Uh, so you just need to uh, get that, that, push that. Like that. And if you put that on your belt buckle, belt thingamajig, there we go. Jilly, do a, do a quick check on the audio, yeah? <clears throat> Paul. Okay, one, two, one, two. You good? One, two, one, two. You good? Cool. How you doing, mate? I'm brilliant. How are you? Okay. Quieter than he was before, but can you hear him? That's the most important thing. Okay, that's a good thing. Right, okay, Paul. Uh, how you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. Thank you very uh, much. It's, um, what is it, December the... Well, I can tell you, 17th. December the 17th, so not long to go now, mate. You must be quite busy, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, as you can see, that's uh, normal um, shipping. Yeah, um, yeah. Every day it's sort of like three to 10 bags. Yes. For the models going out all over the world. Yes. Uh, not every time for Christmas, but um, a lot of it is. So um, yeah, it's a busy time of year. So it's a continual all, and all year round uh, 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 situation with, with model enthusiasts around the world, uh, aviation enthusiasts or whatever it might be, somebody buying something, a special present for somebody uh, who works in an office or, because uh, yep. obviously these things look great on desks, don't they? Yeah, I mean, even between Christmas and the new year, yeah. um, you know, some of the children will get money. Yeah. Um, or even we do vouchers. Yeah. So, um, you know, people will have vouchers and they'll come and they'll use their vouchers and spend their money. And, and so uh, we're busy really, um, with, with Christmas up until the end of the year. Yes. And then come January, we start again and uh, off we go preparing the new books. Yes. And uh, you know, the new registration books come out uh, from Air Britain and from Mac 3. So That's um, got to be a pretty, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit because the books are next door, aren't they? Uh, yeah, there's books next door. We've got a few in the corner here. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but that must be a pretty uh, major administrative sort of like... Uh, uh, is that all logged on computer and uh, spat out onto a printing machine, literally? Or um, well, there's there's records that are kept by the authors. Right. And they update it every month throughout wow. the year. Wow. Right. And I see. And then um, <clears throat> when we're ready to go and uh, publish the books, yeah, uh, we basically press the button and give that information to the printer, and then the books are printed. And uh, again, we send them out all over the world. Fantastic. Is it is it something that's. Uh, 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 continued or is it is it depleted ever so slightly because of the fact that we've got so many uh, uh, technology at our fingertips now where you can just look something up like uber uber quick or, or is this for the really hardened uh, 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 plane spotter so to speak well the thing is is that this hobby I mean there are youngsters <coughs> excuse me there are youngsters coming into it but not like you know when I when I was young that's all there was. Now they've got computers. There's a lot of information around on computers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not everything is on the internet. There's a lot of information that we have in our publications that is not on the internet. Right. So that's why you know we have quite a successful um, um, publication, uh, World Airline Registrations and European Airline Registrations. And um, there's information in there that people can't get elsewhere. Yeah, right. Okay, Paul, we need to change that mic. Flip in it. Give us a here, mate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One more time. One more time. Okay. Hang on, Joe. Give Can us I a shout. Just answer the phone, or oh, uh, uh, Joe Shah. Look, if you come round here, just while we're talking, you just pick the phone up and drop it down. Okay. 
No, no, yeah. just just pick it up and drop it like that. Yeah. Okay. And it stops the right. call. Okay. Do you know what to do? Yeah. Let me show you. Look. Okay, folks, we're going to have a walk around, quite uh, quite an in-depth walk around uh, because we've got a lot of stuff to show you uh, from uh, the large scale stuff, uh, old stuff as well. There's a lot of people who are going to sort of like know exactly what they're looking at here. Um, and me as well, uh, in terms of the uh, the old school stuff as well, you've got some, let's just start at the front of the store, um, Paul. Yeah, sure. Because, uh, you know, you've got some lovely old things here. Look at this. Uh, this 747. Now, is that, is that a 300? That's a 300. That's a 747 300. Yeah, 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 with uh, all nip on and uh, looking very. Can you turn that light off, mate? Because I'm just I actually could. getting a, a, a ping off of it. Oh, okay. I don't know if that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah, that's. It but was... um, that's, a, that's a. What sort of what sort of price are we talking about on that? that that's about 195. See, that's decent, isn't it? For an old school aeroplane like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> See, then... we bought a collection. Uh, unfortunately, one of our <clears throat> customers uh, passed away, and uh, his wife said, "I've got so many models, I'm not interested. Wow. Could you come down and do a valuation?" Which I did, and um, we purchased all the models. Yes. Check them over, make sure they're all okay, and um, wow, uh, I'm selling them on now. Wow. Can, sorry, can we throw that light on one more time? Yeah, mate? of course you can. Thanks. Yeah, looking better, looking better. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a fantastic. Oh wow! So he bought that a long time ago, I'm guessing. Or... Uh, I would have <clears throat> probably about twenty years ago. Yeah, wow. And also in his collection, underneath you can see there's the Catalinas. There's two big scale Catalinas, which are, yeah. to be yeah. honest, I'd never seen before. Yeah, um, my mum's brother uh, flew <coughs> on the Catalinas um, with. Um, the uh the coastal command oh, okay yeah. yeah it was in that bubble at the back there wow wow yeah that's, yeah, a, what that's a, a great what, vet, vet. that's just what, a, what a view yeah what a shot man what a shot and then you've got they're both australian so yeah. and so a and obviously the uh, sunbird services both australian taa yeah um and um other aircraft that he had Obviously, the um, <clears throat> Martin M130 here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fabulous stuff. I mean, this is just really, really classic stuff, isn't it? It is, it and, is. Um, and, you know, I mean, that, that, that just suits any uh, uh, enthusiast, doesn't it? It you does, know, because, it does. Because of its, its heritage and, uh, and... And because it'll sit on your desk. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's attractive, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, this is a classic, isn't it? Uh, the Antonov 22, Antonov. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't come over to the UK very much, but when it does, uh, it does attract a lot of enthusiasts and a lot of spotters to um, to come in. So, uh, Antonov 22 models always sell very well. Yes, um, that comes from the Ukraine, a manufacturer in the Ukraine. Oh, is it? Okay. And we wish all our Ukraine people um, <laughs> very well at the moment. Yeah, Antonov 124s. Um, uh, we've got Libyan cargo at the top and um, the Russian Air Force yeah. Antonov 124. Yeah, great stuff. So it really does appeal to, uh, to, 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 to everybody who's into the, the commercial stuff, the freighter stuff. It does. Uh, yeah, going up here. Does. I mean, um, this, uh, I mean this, this, is, this, this is a classic, isn't it? Oh, that's I mean, Singapore Jumbo. Yeah. Um, that was a model that was... Um, given to the station master at um, Heathrow and uh, for Singapore Airlines and uh, he retired 10 years ago had to downsize and uh, he sold me his collection and that was one of the aircraft that um, wow. one of the aircraft models that he sold me these were in his uh, these were in his uh, in his office were they yeah or? in the office at Heathrow right yeah wow. and what sort of money are we talking about for that one there uh, that's about 395 about yeah. 400 pounds and if, of course, you're a ARD club member, you get a 10% discount off of that. There you go. There you go. What about this Concorde here? That's a okay. pretty good example, isn't it? This is a very, very nice Concorde. Yeah. It was made for the museum in uh, Manchester. And okay. uh, for some reason, they didn't take it. And um, I was offered it by the manufacturer. So because it was so nice, I decided to, uh, to take it. 
Um, I mean, it is for sale. It's five hundred pounds, but uh, it looks good in the window. Yeah, so. you'd rather not. Sell I'm, it. I'm in no hurry to sell if it. If someone walks in, you'd you'd, you'd um and ah about I it. I would, yeah. Okay, and this uh, this um, just over here. Oh, my nap. Yeah. Uh, of course, yesterday, uh, the very last Emirates A380 uh, left Hamburg. Uh, last ever build of the A380. Uh, a really poignant day, and uh, of course. Um, a very, I guess, I'm guessing, is this quite a popular model? Yeah, A380s, uh, they're very popular, even more so now, because um, a lot of them you, you, you can't see anymore. Yes. Uh, a lot of them are finished, but uh, yeah, Emirates A380s, uh, they're big chunky models, that's 495, so about 500 pounds, but um, yeah. Yeah. you know, it, it's, it's an attractive thing to look at. Yes, indeed, and of course, look at that classic in the window right there. Yeah, well, the real aircraft, I mean, that's, um, that's an in-flight model. But the real aircraft, of course, is at St. Athen now, has been retired yeah. in the museum there. Is she sitting outside or inside? Outside. Is she outside? Mm. It's always quite worrying. That's the worrying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sitting outside, rotting away, you know. Um, that's a classic down there, hidden amongst the bags. Aer Lingus 747. Yeah, with the green top. Uh, 100, isn't it? Is it a 100? Uh, yeah, 747 100, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Good old isn't days. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely fantastic. And we're getting down to that sort of like uh, 200th scale. What sort of money are we talking about on that? If somebody um, walked in now and wanted to buy that? That's about £139. Right, okay. Very nice. Very nice. And, and, and of course, um, people need to appreciate that uh, although uh, this aircraft's got its wheels down, yep. uh, they are all magnetically attached. On, on, on Not on all of your models, but on a number of them. Yep, that's true. Uh, so you can have it... Uh, wheels up in flight so to speak that's correct uh, or uh, or gear down well this this one has not got the boac has not got uh, magnetic undercarriage i see uh, it comes fixed but when the the range started probably about 15 years ago yes it was um decided to have wheels down because collectors wanted it on undercarriage yes and then yes. as time went on people said oh i want to stand so we just added a stand yeah. changed the mold slightly and yeah. um, that's how they're made at the moment now the other thing is that obviously uh, you, you literally do uh, have so many varieties of aircraft in terms of their liveries here as well. Yeah. Just have a look at this Emirates 380 over here. Okay. Uh, I don't remember that one. I don't remember ever seeing this one. Uh, no, I think that, to be honest, that one was done, it came from the Emirates store in Dubai. Okay. And uh, they, it was a, a promotional model more so than the real aircraft. The real I aircraft see. didn't have that colour scheme. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's really rare then. That's it is. a very rare model. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's one that um, you don't see very often. Yes. But I like to try and get as many different types of models for collectors as I possibly can. Yes. Yes. And uh, right. Well, we'll get into the, 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 the real thick of it in terms of the um the display cabinets that you've got here okay um i mean just everywhere i look i want to point the camera uh, <laughs> this is this is is this um one of their development aircraft with pan am yes it, it is uh, or that, with boeing should i say with, with well it was with boeing yeah hmm. um but uh, as you can see the nose probe on the front yeah um it was to measure crosswind on approach and how the aircraft was going to be affected so literally on approach, if there was a crosswind of say 25 knots, it would hit the probe first, it would be measured, and then how the aircraft would react after it. Right. And um, I think it was something like production number five or something yes. for Pan Am, yes. and uh, Boeing used it to, uh, to do their testing. See, nowadays, your average airline would not like their livery on an aircraft no, that's when it's true. being when it's you know what I mean that's true uh, we're getting uh, we're, you know we're, we're talking to long tail aviation about uh, um, them taking on a, a combi um, a KLM 747 mm -hmm. and KLM don't want their livery shown in no. marketing materials so you know the first thing they've got to do is uh, is delabel it yeah which is uh, which is quite interesting so that's a really uh, that's a really rare aircraft and of course, you've got some of the some of the uh, some of the stuff here is pretty standard. Yeah, Virgin um, Seven Eight Seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very nice indeed. Looking good. And of course, you've got more or less the whole. We'll get to the ranges in terms of. Uh, but uh, when you come down to something like this, now that's yeah. a beautiful yeah. model, isn't it? Yeah, that's a two hundred scale. Um, that's a mahogany um, model, and um, it's mahogany. Not mahogany, as in as in, as in it's, it's crafted from. Yeah. 
Is so it really? you, you can see that the difference between that one and the one above, which is die cast metal, you can see the difference in di in um, in quality. Yeah, but to be honest with you, mate, I like the I like the off colour of it, and I like the sort of I mean I know what you're talking about with the wings. You can see uh, the wing surfaces uh, are rounded. not as detailed as as the as the you can do a lot more with die cast, can't you? Yeah, slightly, you know, slightly more rounded. Yeah. Yeah, you know the the the, the lights and the and the uh, the blisters and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's just a that's a real classic, isn't it? That's a beautiful beautiful example. And I've, I've bought the, the one below, I've bought in some JetBlue models now because they're now flying into Heathrow. Yes, indeed. And um, we'll start seeing staff and uh, crews um, coming around. So um, we've got some of the models for them, should they want it. Nice, nice. And that model underneath um, uh, was bought from the uh, Aeroflot themselves. Yes. Um, they get so many models made every year. And uh, they send me a list. Would I be interested in this, this, and this? So um, I got some of the uh, A320s. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Moving around to here. Uh, great to see you've got this now. Lots of people are going to remember this one, aren't they? Uh, no yeah. way, BA. <laughs> yeah. That's just uh, that's just awesome. Yeah. Um, these are fairly old. These models now. Um, I'm. It's probably about seven or eight years since we made the models, but no way BAAA I think goes back even you know much further than that. And uh, again, enthusiasts want these old classics because they've flown on them or they've seen them or taken pictures of them, and uh, uh, we can put them like that or on the stand. Yeah, going right back to the uh, to the two hundred that started the whole thing. Yes, look at that. We were talking actually the other day about um, Virgin having a retro uh, livery, but there's no, not really much point, is there? Because there, there's not a lot of change in it, other than that that that's, that that long strip, you know, the uh, the strip that's the cheat line, pretty typical yeah. of a, uh, a a retro style scheme, isn't it? It is. But yeah. it's good if they if it would be good if they did it anyway. Um, just jumping down to here. Uh, we'll go through as many cabinets as we can, folks. Um, another freighter, and look at this. We all know about this one. Yep. That's how up-to-date you guys are. You've got the uh, face, mask, face mask Cargo Lux 747. And that's the interactive series from JC Wings. As you can see, the nose can go up. Yes. So you get you, in the model, you get two options, one with the nose up and one with the nose in the normal configuration. Can you si see inside the uh, the fuselage, or is it just blanked off? You can. Would you want me to take it off so you yeah, can have a look? Yeah, go on. Let's just have a little look, shall we? Oh, nice, nice. Look at that. I don't know if we've got. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. All the lights behind it look like it's in the in the Boeing production. Hang it on, does, it? doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, we've seen uh, we've seen this one a few times, haven't we? Vamos 747. Well, yeah, that was uh, the um, one that was bringing all the people with COVID back to the UK, indeed. wasn't it? Yeah. And we've got one with a very very. Um, brief flame out at Gatwick as well. Yeah. Uh, Jilly, you might want to close your eyes. This one here. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, get nice and close to that for Jilly there. <laughs> yeah, but we've seen that at uh, Schiphol. And then coming down here, just more models. Look at that, I mean, I, uh, Scoop, look at that, wow. That's pretty new, isn't it? Or yeah, well, fairly new as as a model, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Scoot have been around a little while. Yeah. You need to go to Singapore to see them. Yes. There's another special livery. Yeah, special um, gel livery, uh, special Turkish livery. So there's always a big um, following for special schemes. So you're really keeping up with the market trends and what people are, uh, what people are uh, looking for in terms of uh, models. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the manufacturers tell us what they're making. Um, obviously, they've got productions that they um, that they do every month, and they send us a list and tell us what's coming, and then we we order them in. Look at these down here, mate. This is my sort of era right here. The DC8s. Air Canada. Yeah. Look at all this 
63s and 72s, aren't they? Or um, they're all 60, 61s and 63s. Okay. I think Hispania is 62. It maybe. is Hispania. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. More seven forty sevens down here. There was the the cargo lux on the end. Yeah. There was a TV program about the uh, the two uh, whales that um, were taken um, on the aircraft. They had to keep them, and uh, they were put into captivity. And now they're kept in like a, a little fjord in Iceland. Ah, oh, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I can't remember exactly with the Trans Aero what the um, what the hands were all over it, but yeah. uh, quite effective. That's old livery, isn't it? With UPS. UPS, yeah, that's a very old livery. Yeah, that's an old uh, two hundred, isn't it? Lovely um, old two hundred. It is, yeah. Wow. We've seen that one before, haven't we? We still see that these days, don't we? Uh, I think it's still flying, yeah. In fact, uh, I think um, I think I got one at. Didn't they have one at um, Toulouse in a three twenty or three twenty one or something with the? Uh, um, possibly. Look at, this. look at this classic. Now, how come you've still got? some of these models Paul because I mean that to me is a quality classic DC 10 Super 30 of course the uh, has it got the yes it has the only distinguishing difference between that and the standard DC 10 was the uh, was the bogey wheel wasn't it yeah of course you got the detailing right there now that one of course was the um, the Laker that was set up that's not the original Laker Skytrain no that was the restart of Fr Freddie Laker Yes, I think it was in the Bahamas. He he started it, so that's the the second generation type of um, colour scheme for Laker. Wow, look at this! Not a lot of people have seen a British Airways seven two seven seven two seven. Man, no, they were operated for British Airways by a company in South Africa called Comair. Oh, there, the, that's why the seven three sevens are still out there, isn't it? It is. Mad dog. And then the Italian Air Force DC-9, uh, obviously no longer used, but um, the military, no, I mean that particular aeroplane has been into our local airport, Northolt, many years ago. Right. With VIPs or whoever. Not on the board. one we saw at, um, no, no, it's not the one we saw at, uh, at Manchester. We saw a mad dog at Manchester one time. Uh -huh. so I think it was a charter jet, but uh, yeah, wow. So, um, in this particular cabinet, it's just a, a, an array of... Um, What's that, Jilly? Just say that again? Sorry, man. Just That's okay. One of our members has got over 500 models, and the majority of them are yours. <laughs> well, thank wow. you very much for wow. his support. Yeah, so these, um, these models here, you know, the British Airways, um, the Landor scheme, um, seems to be the most popular scheme that British Airways had yes and um, the British Air Tours TriStar used to operate from Gatwick and the little comet that's behind yeah. Yeah. Uh, originally flew into Heathrow in the early 70s it came in from Mexicana and uh, was parked outside the front of the hangars at uh, British Airways for a long, long time oh, before, was it? It, before it was painted up into uh, the apprentice training scheme. Wow. So it came in as XANAB. I was at Heathrow when it landed. Really? Yeah. Wow. Look yep. at the old Britannia 767 at the back there. Look. Wow. Yep. The old Luton Classics and also the Britannia 737-200. Another classic. Yes. And then we've got some prototypes up the top on the next shelf up. 
with the TriStar um, in the Eastern colours, but uh, Lockheed painted it up because they were doing a demonstration to BEA at the time. Okay. So uh, they painted up the tail and they put the BEA stickers on the side. And I think it appeared at Farnborough. I'm trying to think what year. Maybe 72, something like that. 72 oh. or 74. And at the same time, the aircraft behind it, the DC-10, um, from this side, you'll be able to see all the airline logo badges yes. on it. Yes, yes. Um, and 1338 uniform was the one that came into Heathrow. And uh, that was doing demonstrations to uh, BEA, BOAC, British Airways, um, at the time. Wow. That's beautiful. I wish they would do a, uh, uh, a an all chrome um, or a chrome bellied um, retro jet. Yeah, yeah. That's just classic. And then the next one is West and KLM hybrid. What's that all about? That was when the two airlines merged. Right. They um, they painted up that particular DC-10 uh, with the KLM top. Uh, it was it was a Northwest aircraft, and they painted the blue on the top. And uh, that was flying around for about three years, I think it was something like that. Look at that British Caledonian 747, man. Wow. Well, not British. That's Caledonian. Oh, it's Caledonian. My yeah. apologies. Yes, yes. It's all right. We've got a British Caledonian 747 being delivered next week. Really? Yep. Wow. That is fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? A lot of the uh, a lot of the people that work at Heathrow used to work for British Caledonian at Gatwick. Right. And uh, we bring out the British Caledonian models, and they come in here in their droves and pick them up. Wow, that is fantastic. We've got a member called Bcal Pan. Okay. Uh, I don't know if she's uh, I think she's something to do with Bcal. Anyway, uh, look at that South African uh, seven forty seven uh, SP SP special performance. Yep. Look at that. I don't know which one I flew on, but I flew on one of them. Did you? Yeah. Ah, you yeah. beat me then. I never flew on an SP. Oh, really? I always wanted to, but uh, yeah, never did it. Down to Joburg. And that particular livery is very popular for the orange yes, tail. Yes, I bet. I bet. Very popular. That's classic, isn't it? It is. If they ever do come back, they should. Uh, they should maybe consider, if they've got enough money, of course. Yeah, d d d it's like, well, if they started like that, I think there would be a lot of uh, people would want to fly with them. Have to, yeah, want to get on board. Thai DC-10, beautiful. Yeah, Heathrow Classics. Canadian was the uh, the Gatwick Classic as well. Yes. Nice. And then closer to your camera is the Air Florida DC-10, and. Um, I think that was, uh, I didn't see too much of Gatwick in the 80s. I think it was uh, wow. seen at Gatwick Airport. Wow. That's a cabinet and a half, that, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> it's worth getting the achy arms for that. Now, we're moving, um, <laughs> we're moving to the smaller scale stuff here. Yeah, achy I mean, you've got a arms. mixture of the two, haven't you? Yep. But look at these old Braniffs now. Look at this. Paul, really, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised you've got these in here, to be honest with you. Um, that is just, uh, what sort of money are we talking about on these? And they're about £100. Wow, yeah. £100 each. Some real classics there. You see, what we're, what we're able to do, um, because we, uh, we hold the Braniff licence, yes. is that we can remanu remanufacture some of the old colour schemes. Right. And um, obviously there's just, uh, just two there at the moment. But uh, we also did the 747, the big orange. Right. Um, a Gatwick Classic. Yes. These uh, obviously didn't come over to Gatwick, so they were domestic for the US. Look at this Swiss Air Convair Coronado. Yep. Wow. Saw that many times at um, Heathrow. It's one of the very few aircraft you could see on approach. Yes, um, because of the smoke. Because of the smoke, yeah, yeah. You could see it over East London on yes. its way in with the black yes. smoke everywhere. Yeah, and you could still hear it 10 minutes after it had taken off as well. Insane, <laughs> Absolutely. Man. Insane. Wow. What a, what a classic. We've talked about so many of these jets over on the show so many times. Yeah. Just fantastic to see. 
and then you can go right down to the smaller scale stuff as well yeah these are one 400 scale uh, this particular um, shelf is uh, Aero Classics and uh, they release probably about 12 to 15 models every month and uh, because they are classics they're all old and uh, different colour schemes not very often do you get many up to date but you can get some up to date they've got a few um, Mexicana, One World, Alaska but primarily Aero Classics are known for their retro yeah. releases I think most people would probably <coughs> I certainly would yeah. go straight for that Condor DC-10 yeah 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 isn't that beautiful man if I can get it in focus wow beautiful I noticed uh, just around the corner here you've even got uh, where was it oh here yes the Boris jet uh, yes, um, as you know, uh, Boris um, has been into our shop yeah. um, three or four times now. And um, the last time he came in, um, he said to me, uh, are you making my model? And I said, well, we're, we're about to start. Good. So I said to him, um, when we get some, uh, next time you're around, I'll get you to sign the boxes for me. Yes. So he's agreed to do that. And... Um, uh, yeah, he is, he's uh, he's fantastic supporter of our business. Oh, that's great, mate. That's great. Is he the local? Um, is yeah, it, he's is lo his, local MP. His, it's his, Even it's though his he's the constituency, Prime Minister. right? Yeah, is, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. I've got you. I've got you. Okay. Wow. Right. Okay. So we've got more uh, classic sort of. Uh, there's a, there's a favourite of ours. No one knows where she's going to end up, do we? Is she going to end up at? Uh, well, uh, one of the museums, hopefully. We'd like to think so. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, the, the place where it really should be is Duxford. Yes, of course. Uh, they can uh, land her there as well. Yeah, they least. can land it there. They can yeah. keep it there. It's not so big. No. Um, I was actually hoping that one of the 747s would be kept there. Yes, but, indeed. But uh, to be honest, when I was down at um, Cardiff before the retirement, uh, the BOAC and the Landor were together. And then when I walked underneath it and I thought wow there's no way it just takes up so much room yes so much space yeah yeah so hopefully she'll go there yeah I think there's definitely room for us maybe next to the VC10 or something like that yes yeah look at these oh look at that BEA 111 the pocket rocket the original pocket rocket yes it's um that one was made by Sky Classics who uh, manufactured in the UK so that one's a little bit more expensive Yes. But it's uh, 139.95. Right. Okay. And Super 111s, I think, were based at Manchester at the time. Right. On the shuttles and... Uh... Middle East Airlines Comet. Wow. Never even knew it. Yeah. Yeah, that used to come in. Nice. And, of course, the Comet is very, very popular. But what yes. we're finding is, with airliners like the Comet the Caravel, um, there isn't as many pilots left and crew that used to work on them yes. left around now. You know, they're either elderly or retired or no longer with us. Yes. But yes. Um, we like to try and keep them in stock if we can. Yep. Yep. And there is uh, one of the classics. Um, which that's the original. Airways. That's a that's a um, that's a two hundred, isn't it? Yep. That's um, one of the originals. That's not a, a retro, even though it is retro. But it is a uh, is a classic. Uh, it is. Yeah, that was the, the first two hundred. Yep. EDXA and uh, in the Niga scheme. So, uh, any thoughts on? Um, we're seeing that Singapore three hundred and fifty over there. Just got news that they've uh, they've. Um, swapped 23 orders for neos uh, for, for narrow body neos right. um for um seven a350 freighters <laughs> so you're gonna have to get your uh your thinking cap on there well, Paul. yeah it, it's i don't know it's difficult um cargo even though you know, you know they're, they're running the mill airplanes Cargo aircraft don't sell as well as passengers. Oh, passenger. really? No. Wow. We, do, we do sell some, yeah, but they're yeah. not uh, followed like um, the passenger planes are. Right, right. That's interesting. 
I must be a I must be a rare breed then. <laughs> well, some some people collect just cargo, but yes. there isn't that many. Yes. So the ratio will be probably um, twenty percent will will go for cargo and eighty percent will go for passenger. Yeah. Yeah. So what about triple seven X then? Uh, it's been developed. Um, we're working on the mould. Yeah. Got the plans from Boeing. Yeah. Um, as you know, we're licensed with Boeing, so we're working on it. Yes. Um, it's got to be right. We've got to get it within one percent of the real aircraft. Really? Yeah. So I'm guessing you're going to be uh, looking at doing the uh, foldable wingtips. Of course. Yes. Of course. I'd, I, I'm really excited to see that up against, uh, you know, the uh, the the, the 7773, You know. Yes. Uh, yep. In terms of like literally next to each other because it's going to be quite some time before you'll probably be able to show us it next to each other before we actually get to see it in the flesh so to speak yeah i think it was it was due to come to heathrow wasn't it it was due to come to heathrow it didn't yeah turn up yeah on, didn't turn sorry, up sorry, sorry no. here, but, um it would be nice to uh, to see it yeah uh hopefully we'll have a farmer again very soon yeah and uh, start seeing some of these airplanes again have you got a uh, you've got a seven eight ten in that scale um we have just interesting to see the three jets where is it um because there you get a really good impression i mean no, we've we've we, we see it of so often on the show in real life but uh interesting to see a uh a, a350 1000 a triple seven 300 uh up against each other there you can see how very much um uh the almost the same size you know very very similar in size but i wonder if there is a uh because yeah, they, oh, yeah. It's, it is x okay here's a seven eight seven ten jerry okay do you want me to put it next to the yeah take that Aeromexico mexico out and put it next to it okay please So we did do this, didn't we? In uh, in lockdown, I think we did a a, a, mod, a size comparison, um, but that just goes to show that those three uh, variants are very very similar. Um, and of course, uh, it's interesting, you know, because again, that triple seven three hundred, it it serves the sector so well, doesn't it? It does. Um, it does. With the seven eight ten as well, so it kind of makes you wonder why the seven eight the triple seven uh, X is being introduced because, you know. Um, well, a lot it, of it is the is the performance. Yeah. And how cheap it is to operate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, British Airways and a lot of airlines retired their seven four seven four hundreds because they're gas guzzlers. Yeah, exactly. And they've been replaced with A three fifties. Um, but if you compare that the 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 way down was the 747 was the most expensive to operate compared to then the triple seven 300 yeah because uh, they I mean they're economical but not as economical as the a350 and the seven eight seven ten yeah so it's yeah. all about engines and yeah uh, of course it is economists. of course it is yeah yeah I mean uh, the um, I was reading that apparently uh, around about four hundred thousand tons of of um, of um oh, what is it the uh the the uh i'll have to i'll have to i'll have to read it out on the show but it was it was it was quite an impressive number uh with singapore taking their 400s their 747 400s out of service and emissions i think it's four hundred thousand tons of emissions are yeah. saved from uh introducing the 350 uh freighter compared oh. to the yeah oh, okay. yeah four hundred thousand tons a year which is uh that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see the 777X lined up against that lot. Okay, well, the, it will be the... next year sometime. It will. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, just moving on here. Um, obviously, we've been through all this stuff here. Uh -huh. um, here is a nice little cabinet, which uh, we saw being uh, put together earlier on. This is good, isn't it? Because we, we were at Miniature Wonderland uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And um, they, do, they do have a beluga um set up there um lovely old um ups uh dc10 freighter there md11 that one uh, sorry md11 yeah. My apologies yeah um now this is this is good isn't it again you've got the option of um of the fixed yeah nose. there's 
I mean, basically, this is again the JC Wings interactive series. Yeah. And you can have this one if you don't want to have it in the with the nose up and the uh, the cargo sh on view. Um, you can take the cargo out, take that no that um, nose off, and place that one back, and then yep. the aircraft is in, if you like, the taxi configuration. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there's and this aircraft, and it comes with this uh, with this A320 or whatever it is. It doesn't uh, come front. with it. That's the oh. little a airport accessory sets. Oh, so no, it doesn't come with this, no. It doesn't come with it. No. Oh, okay, it just um, comes with the with the can, nose up. You can up buy the the sets separately. Yeah. And um, you know we sell them as well. Yeah, they're and, cool, um, man. Uh, just displayed it um, as so. So you get two fuse larges and the yep. cradles, um, exactly how it would be. In when the aircraft um, sections are delivered to Airbus. Nice, nice. So that's how it is on the ground in, if you like, the cargo configuration. Yes. And that's how it looks. In flight. In flight, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Air Force One? Uh, yeah, Air Force One. Um, in the Still in about two to three years away. Yes. Whether it will stay in that scheme, we still don't know. Yeah, so this is the... This is the one that uh, Trump yeah, de that, de uh, designed, was it? That's correct. That was his um, his design. He yeah. um, he wanted Air Force One to to look like that. Um, but as you know, he's not uh, in power anymore. So whether that will continue, uh, we don't know. But that is what it would have looked like if Trump had continued in power. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's the 800 variant as well. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, the aircraft is still being worked on. Yes, but whether it will revert back to the eighty-nine military aircraft wing. They were originally going scheme. to Lufthansa, weren't they? I think the. Uh, um, you, I, I'm they, not sure they, if it's Lufthansa. They were going to another airline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they were um, in storage, I think, at Victorville for a while. Yes, indeed. Okay. More classics. That's interesting. Uh, oh, that's one of those ones that Maggie Thatcher. Uh, yeah, involved with, she famously it? put her tissue over the her handkerchief over the tail. Yes, um, because she was very obviously pro-British. Um, but this one is Pathani, which is the Indian tail. Yeah, and um, that is made by Shuko in uh, one two fifty scale. Wow, which is die cast metal. Wow, nice. And I hear that. Um, Th this one here is plastic, this A380. I hear that Qatar came back the other day. To they Hensrow. did. We caught it. You got it, did you, we the A380? Got it. We got her coming in and going out. So that's um, that's good news to see the 380s returning. Yeah, we've got four, four, four operators now, which is always really good. Yeah. And then, of course, the uh, Air New Zealand 777. Uh, that is a, um, a Hogan Wings. Uh, plastic model. Nice. Nice. Very nice indeed. So, moving on to your militaria. Yep. You've got a lot of military stuff. Uh, on the small scale stuff as well. I mean, that is just insane, isn't it? Yeah. Great lineup. These are Skyfame models. They're all made in the UK. Um, the gentleman that makes these is extremely knowledgeable about. Um, the models he's making and his knowledge generally of the RAF and um, air forces around the world. Hasn't he got a little workshop near an airport or something? Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's got a well, he lives close to RAF Coningsby. That's it, yeah. And yeah. Um, he, he goes out, he's a keen photographer as well. Yes. And he also does um, plastic modeling, uh, 144 scale. Wow. But uh, some of the aeroplanes here, you know, are, are the, the old British classics. Yes. Um, Lightning. Vampire. Yeah. Lightning. Meteor. Sea Vixen. Yeah. Gannet. Yes. Uh, the Swift. Yeah. Um, Hunters. It's... Um, it's and I, I actually ask him sometimes to do a bit of uh, American stuff because we've got a lot of American customers. Yeah. So in this corner, we've actually got the um, F-111 with the bicentennial tail for nice. the... Nice. 76 to... No, uh, yeah, 76... Uh, the, the, that one there and then if you go further back we've got the B-57s yes um, funny enough there's uh, still five B-57s in storage in Davis Monthan that's crazy I saw them a couple of years ago they're still there 
they've been there I think since 1982 wow something like that of course a good old um, air show classic the Phantom as well oh yeah yeah great stuff on the small scale stuff that's quite nice just saw that the, the little um, for dioramas and things yeah it, it was done about 10 years ago people wanted some buses um, so we did some of the um, articulated buses and some of the route master buses for people um, to put onto their dioramas yeah because I was uh, I was playing a golf with a fella the other day he's got a, uh, he's got a um, haulage company at mm -hmm. Heathrow yeah and he I didn't know that apparently when you uh, s when you checked in at BEA it was all the way out uh, near the um, Wait, London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you bust it from London to Heathrow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or London Airport as it was then, I'm guessing. But yeah, and, the, and the little the little trolley on the back. Can you see it? Yeah, with all the baggage. That had all the baggage in it. Yeah, insane. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. And talking of dioramas, uh, there's some classics. Uh, um, I'll just grab those uh, Vulcans that you've got sitting there at the back. Yeah, there's Sky Classics made in the UK. Yeah. Vulcans. And the C141 Starlifters. Nice. And along the centre, we've just received those a couple of weeks ago. It's the um, C119 um, box cars, um, Indian Air Force. They actually put a, a jet engine on the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the American Air Force in the silver colours. And then regulars into North Alt years ago is the next one, the Italians with the camouflage and the day glow. Yes. And then obviously used uh, the AC119 American Air Force was used in the early days of Vietnam. Wow. This is lovely old PIA Viscount. Yeah, that was actually um, <laughs> only delivered to us last week. Was it? Yeah, it's done by um, a guy that many people know called Martin of Small World. Right, right. And uh, he does uh, very small runs, maybe only five. Okay. Each. And um, he did PIA with the green tail and PIA with the white tail. Wow. Um, and this That's one classic. is... Um, Sky Classics, as you can see, it's the early days of Sunderland flying boat. Yeah, Ryanair. Wow, no way. And it flew like that. And actually, um, Mark, as you know, who works for me, yeah, uh, he saw that fly over his house on approach to Heathrow. He did a fly past over no. Heathrow. I don't know what year, but it would have been wow. late seventies. Never forget something like that. No, do you? never. Um, it's like, it's it's kind of the, like the day when I was walking up Lindfield High Street. Uh, when I was a young lad, and I saw a, um, a CL44 swing tail with out, bo both outboard engines off, uh, feathered, wow. and fly up, and I was told that they were doing training, you know. But uh, uh, um, it was uh, what was the cargo airline down at Gatwick with the swing tails? Um, oh, Trans uh, No, no. Uh, I'll think about it in a minute, Jelly. Okay. If anyone says it, to, uh, oh. It was uh, Blue Tail. Oh, Tradewinds. Tradewinds, yeah, CR44, yeah, yeah. Trade winds, yeah. that was it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day when my dad was flying out of Gatwick. Of okay. Course, with the IAS DC-8. Wow. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh dear. Was so, that the one with IAS? Was that the one with the, uh, what, the zebra stripes on it? Uh, no, 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 I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. Okay. So these, these um, are Western models. Yes. Um, US Marines, this one used to visit Europe quite a lot and it was a creamy colour uh, but they were always absolutely immaculate. Really? Uh, yeah, really stunning and, and that was a Norfolk visitor many times. Really? Um, of course Norfolk's just up the road for, from you isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're a quarter of a mile from the, yeah. uh, from the on, a quarter mile from Touchdown. It's a classic old um, Russian jet isn't it with Aeroflot? Uh, yeah, IL-96. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Crazy that, looking machine. Yeah, that one's fiberglass, and uh, again, we got that one from um, Aeroflot. Wow, wow, fantastic. Right, okay, and there's this diorama here that, that you guys were putting together earlier on, which I actually uh, uh, helped out with just that little one. There. You did do it, okay, did, thank I you I for did. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, look at this, I mean, what uh, you, you sell this. Uh, this um, yeah, that's the Gemini terminal set. Right. And um, these are, you know, we've got them in stock and they are available. 
there's a deluxe airport with um, lights and um, is there now and there's also the the standard one which uh, has got all the the ramp at the front for cars yes uh, going up to like the real terminal wood yeah yeah and yeah. all the air bridges at the back yes and you put what aircraft you like on it so and, and they also do the little accessories yeah which the little is tugs and the tugs and uh, baggage wow. trolleys and aircraft tugs and things just need a little speaker in there, like, doon, 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 <laughs> flight number, BR, and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, and around the back, of course, you've got the uh, the arrivals or departures, whichever it might be. Yep. That's fantastic. Loving that, man. You know, the only thing that's missing it. from this terminal is a viewing gallery on the top. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, love that, love that. That's really, really classy, that is. Can I get in there with the glass, without the glass, just to... Ooh, that, sorry, sorry yeah, mate, yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh, it, it. I didn't realise it was... <laughs> I, I <laughs> went right. to slide it. Okay, there we go. That's the one I want. There we go. Nice. What sort of money are we talking about for this? Um... Let me just, I'll have to check that one. Just be with, be with you one second. I'm trying to find the price for the terminals. Okay. The big one is zero. Well, the, the small one. Yeah, the small one, Jerry's 249. Okay, this one here. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, 249. And then we got the deluxe and one. That comes with the jetties and all the little bits and bobs and yes, stuff. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then you've the, got to spend, obviously, you know, and how much is the average price of these, these, uh, these 200ths, are they? Uh, these are 100th. one 400 scale. One 400, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah these are all one 400 scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, average price, probably 35, 45 pounds -ish, Okay, okay. Sort of thing. The smaller okay. ones are a bit cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, um, you know, we've got them in stock for Christmas and, um, as Christmas presents, you buy the terminal, and then you can come and select from our selection here of which models yeah. you want to put around it. Really good, man. Some people really will good. theme it on Gatwick or, or whatever. I mean, the terminal, I suppose it could be a bit like Terminal 2 at uh, Gatwick, yeah. but... Um, and I guess you could. Uh, I guess it's hollow, so you could theoretically put some lights in there just yeah, to yeah. light it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. And then moving down here, some other old classics. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, good for you. Yep. So in Mayler Fair Cargo, you've, uh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, been a good seller, actually. Has it? It has, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was doing the daily flights for the uh, PPE out of yes. uh, Bournemouth. Yes. So um, we actually saw it last year, doing the flights. It would take off from Bournemouth and um, come over the top here on its way to China. Yeah, she's a workhorse, isn't she? Not all. She really is a workhorse. Of course, the thing is that when you're talking about that kind of thing, you're talking about volume and no weight. You know, you'd fill that whole thing at only weight 50 tons. Yeah. With PPE, it's crazy. Must have some good performance. Yeah. Yeah, nice. This one on the end here, this um, model is coming out. This is made by JC Wings, but there's a 200 scale uh, release coming out right, very soon. Right. So Walt Disney are all right with all of that? It's all licensed. As far as I know. Then. Yeah. As far yeah. as I know, yeah. This is nice. That's quite cool. I like that. That's that's uh, that's pretty cool. And it's uh, yeah. pre delivery. I'm uh, sure sort of you've like seen them down at Toulouse. Yeah, yeah. Painted up like that. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And on that Etihad is Choose London. Yes, which we've uh, seen many, many times and uh, hopefully will be back. Hopefully they will choose London. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just have a, everything all right, GP? Everything okay? Cool, 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 okay. Got some nice uh, Red Arrows examples there. They're really nice, aren't they? Yeah, the They're one nice. on the right is um, a Corgi. Yeah. Um, uh, 172 scale, and on the left is a mahogany version. Some people don't I like, like that. Cast, they like the yeah, mahogany yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like that. That's really smart. Wow. Nice. Good stuff. 
Right, now you also have uh, a new store next door, don't you? I do, uh, and I know we've been talking for a long time about knocking through. Well, yep. it's, it's not far away now. Okay. But, uh, would you like to come and have a look? Yeah, let's go and have a look, mate. Okay. Okay. Let's go. It's a good fan, isn't it? Here we go. Okay, so this... Oh, Paul, what have you got there? What have you got there, mate? <laughs> um, okay, we... Obviously, we buy collections and yes. um, things of interest, really. Yes. Now, this model, the Pan Am 707, was yeah. manufactured in, in about 1960-62. Wow. In Japan. And uh, I jokingly said to the gentleman that was selling it at one of the toy fairs, um, does it work? And he said, yes, it does. That's oh, unbelievable. And I said, well, can you show me? So, do you want to see it? Yeah, go on, then fire it up. All right, so this, this would have been, I assume, a birthday or a Christmas present for yes. some, some yes. lucky youngster. Is the runway long enough? I hope so. I hope so. So, it sounds a bit like a Boeing. JT3Ds. He's going to clip that box, mate. Take off thrust set. Yeah, go on, son. Are you selling that or keeping it? Well, my plan is to have a nostalgic cabinet in this shop. Okay, yes. Once we've knocked through, I'll have a cabinet with all the old stuff, Heathrow yeah. in the 50s and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so definitely. that might well be, you know, with this, which was a, a pullback toy. Wow. Uh, which... Uh, Old Viscount. The old no, Viscount, yeah. man, so that's crazy. This sort of thing is nice for educational purposes yes. as well. We get there's quite a few schools around, yeah, and sometimes yeah. they'll walk past and say, "Can we come in and have a look?" And they yeah, yeah. do little projects on Second World War and things like that. Nice. I see that uh, nice China Southern 320. Is that an old uh, model? That's yeah, it is an old model. It's probably 30 years old now. Wow. Um, there's not that many collectors going for the Chinese airlines in in the UK or Europe but yeah, um, yeah I got it uh, from China a long long time ago kind of want to hold on to that really don't you that's one for the nostalgia bin isn't it it could well be yeah because I'm sure that A320 doesn't exist anymore in reality yeah more than likely I would have thought nice so, so you've got plans for in here have you or is, um, I mean I, I notice it's it's very heavily stocked with boxes, but nice displays as well. You know, you got you do corgi stuff as well, like that Lanco. Yeah, yeah, we do the big corgis. Um, some of these are not available anymore, again, yes. from, from collections. Yes. And it seems to be um, something that we've been doing more and more of uh, is, is taking in collections from people because they'll, they'll say, if you're interested, we have a collection, would you like to come and have a look at it? Give us a value on it. Yes. If not, yes. it's all going to go into the skip. Oh, no. So I've saved quite a few collections. Wow. Um, and in also a big uh, colour slide collection. Um, really? Yeah. I went down to the West Country to pick up a slide collection. And um, the wife of this particular gentleman said, if you don't come down within five days, it's going in the skip. Oh, my goodness. And man. I'd known him for many years. He travelled the world. And I said, no, don't do that. And I uh, came back with a car full of of, bo uh, of books of uh, slides. That's insane. Man. So, what's the story on this wooden jumbo then? Okay, this was in the foyer for the Lufthansa cargo for okay. a few years. Okay. It's made of matchsticks. Yes. It took three years to make, and there's ten thousand matchsticks. Wow. It's solid matchsticks. Wow. And uh, Lufthansa decided they were going to revamp the. Uh, the building and uh, didn't want it anymore so I said don't throw it away <laughs> I'd like to keep it <laughs> wow so, you're lucky you've got some good contacts at Lufthansa to, for, for that to happen yeah absolutely that's for sure yeah 
That's and a beautiful KC 135. Yeah, C135. Um, that's made in, I think, Vietnam. Um, it's there's no markings on it because it's it's more of a mahogany presentation. Yes. But um, it's very nice. Yeah. It's very oh, nice. Very smart indeed. Very 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 nicely built. Um, it is it is amazing when you look at a lot of this stuff. Is 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 the detailing? Is the you know. There's no Mickey Mouse stuff here. It's all uh, the 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 the, um, the markings, you know, uh, the small details, you know, everything that you look at. It's it's great to visit a store that has models that has such incredible detail. Well, there is there is one Mickey Mouse thing here. That's uh, oh. him in the corner. Oh yeah, <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, I didn't even notice that. So uh, that fell in perfectly. But look at this, folks. Look at this for a. For an aircraft carrier yeah what's the deal with this well that's um made of mahogany it came from the philippines and um, i ordered five of these and all different carriers and they did a fantastic job and uh, make it bang to scale and uh, the layout everything and they sell for just under two thousand pounds wow <coughs> Need a big pond for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, look nice in your bath, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Nice, Paul. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. And just to uh, just to let uh, do you wanna, the do you folks wanna, know. Do you want just excuse me, just one sec? Yeah, sure. Hi, I've got twelve boxes for you. Twelve boxes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Obviously, it's on the pallet, but I, I I can't take a pallet, but we'll have to unload it. Yeah. I need to, you know, just. Here. Okay, it can go in here. This this is the latest Gemini delivery, Jerry. Is it? Yep. A, a pallet full of them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Which, do no, it. Have the, yeah, no, have uh, yeah I, I'll, I'll give you. A, okay. We're just doing some some um, filming. Okay. I'll be with you in one second. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if, if 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 some folks see some old stuff in here, Paul, and want to and want to um, buy it, like for instance that uh, British Caledonian, what's that? An old A three hundred up there or A three ten? Where have you seen that? Up there in the right hand corner of that shelf. B Cal. Oh yes, yeah, they're old Worcester models. Right. Again, from a collection. Um, yeah, you know, I mean it's ten pound basically. It's just no. Uh, yeah, yeah. A tenner? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. If you just have a look, I mean it's wow. It's old, but it's yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. box to it. It's been on display. I might grab that off you, mate. I think I might grab that off you because that'll <laughs> look nice on the desk. It's unique, isn't it? It is. It's very unique. It takes it me is. back to my old school days as well. So if if somebody wants to order something now for Christmas. Uh, I know I'm not I'm not putting you on the spot and trying to make you say that, that, that you can guarantee it, but you're pretty confident that if somebody was to order up to what point in the UK, of course that is, I'd imagine. Yeah. You know, overseas is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit tough, isn't it? Well, we we process orders all over this weekend, right up until Christmas, but you know we'll say once we get to Wednesday, we can't guarantee next day. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. just depends on how busy they are. Of course. Of course. Paul, thank you so much, mate. Okay, Jerry. Great to see you again. No problem. And um, probably pop over next year when you've when you've knocked through the wall. I will be contacting you. Yeah, and also when um, you know, Boris Johnson has agreed to open the store for me with yeah, the uh, knock yeah, through. Yeah. So I'd like you to come and. Uh, maybe he could. Uh, maybe he could. Um, you know, with the uh, with the Channel Tunnel, where he could have a little British flag at the other side, and you knock, <laughs> and you knock through one of the bricks, and he's out the other side. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have got opinions on that. Yeah, uh, we've I'm got sure a question. Stand by, Paul. What's that, GP? Have you got any of the Embraer E2 Eject models yet, from Jeff in Massachusetts? No, not yet. No, nothing no, nobody's yet, no. made it yet. Okay, nobody's made it yet. There you go, Jeff. Um, you just have to. Uh, Jeff will have to buy uh, an uh, an E2, um, but uh, he'll have to buy the the old Embraer uh, and buy a Neo and take the engines off the Neo and put the. 
<laughs> there you go, Jeff. Little exercise for you. Oh, I've just got to finish on this 707, this classic. You got, you told me the story behind this 707, didn't you? It was I did. much the same as that guy, isn't it? The, the one of that that fellow who had the, yeah, the it collection. Was, he was. He had the station manager at Heathrow for Singapore Airlines. Um, he uh, he had a big collection for models that were given to him over the years, and um, uh, when he retired, he took them all with him. And he's now downsizing, and offered his collection to me, and I took the collection, uh, bought it from him, and the Austrian 707 apparently was given to him by Austrian Airlines uh, because they flew the aircraft for six months on uh, on lease to Singapore. Wow! So, in the Austrian livery, or it, it, did they rebrand it? I think well. Uh, uh, Austrian livery, probably. Yeah. It was only, for it's six only months, short six lease, months. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was a, a, a wet or dry yeah. lease, but yeah. he um, he had that model given to him for the the help that he uh, he gave him. Fantastic. And that particular aeroplane, Austrian used to come over the top here. Yes. On uh, on airways, um, what we call Lambourne Woodley. Yes. Um, every other day. Wow. OELBA. Wow. So. Fantastic, Paul. Thank you so much. Just stand by. I've got. To, I just literally dropped the call on Jilly. Just stand by. Absolute pleasure, mate. Okay. Um, it's been great. Quite an extensive run through the shop. Yeah. And uh, look forward to coming here for the next one. You're very welcome. Anytime. Thanks, mate. Look after yourself. Yeah. Okay, you GP. Uh, we can go for cut. <laughs>